Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. This video is another Will I Buy It? This is a series on my channel where I share my thoughts about all the new makeup releases. I tell you if I want to buy them or maybe not at all, if I'm not interested at all. And I would love to hear from you in the comments as well what you think about these new releases. Do you agree with me or maybe not? So we have a lot to talk about, so let's get right into it. So if you haven't been on my channel before, my name is Marley and I love making YouTube videos about makeup and beauty. I love doing looks, swatches, reviews and will I buy it videos. So if that sounds good to you, then don't forget to subscribe. I upload about two or three times a week. So a lot of new makeup has been released these past two weeks. We have a lot to talk about. So I'm just gonna open my phone and open Trend Mood and any other Instagram pages where I get my makeup news from. I always link the pages that I use in my description box. So if you wanna know where I get this news, you can click those links and check them out. So I'm sitting a bit to the side so I can show you some pictures over here let me just open up trend mood and go back to the last thing we talked about last time i usually do these videos like every two weeks so often there is a lot to talk about but i don't know if there's anything i really want to pick up this time so new from milk we have these like multi-use color chalks that you can use on your eyes your cheeks your lips and we have this picture with all the different colors. And then we also have this picture with the swatches. I have to say, I'm, I don't really get this. And I don't think it's really gonna be like a useful product. Maybe to some people. Maybe if you want just like a sheer wash of color, it kind of looks like you would get that. I don't know. I just feel like it's a little bit of a weird product. I don't really see how this is gonna work. It feels more like a gimmick than something that's really gonna look flattering. Like these swatches don't really look good. And I'm always a little bit skeptic when it comes to like these multi-use products. Because I feel like usually when something is supposed to be used on all those different places on your face then it's gonna look good it's gonna look the best in one place and then it doesn't look the best on another for example on your lips you want something that's really hydrating but if you put that on your cheeks your cheeks might get like too greasy or sticky so yeah i don't really get this product i don't really see this working out i don't think it looks really attractive even though the promo pick is kind of cool, I guess. But it, does, it doesn't really look like makeup to me. It just looks a bit gimmicky. Then we have this new brand called Lys or LYS. This is coming to Sephora. This isn't really interesting for me because I'm not going to be able to get this one from Sephora US. I guess it looks kind of interesting because they have like this triangle shaped band. So that's different than what we've seen before. So I guess that's slightly interesting but if it isn't even available to me then i'm not really gonna like search and see if it would be for me maybe later on i would be more interested but not right now it's not something i'm really gonna pay attention to then we have this westman atelier new brand this is the same story this looks a little bit more interesting a little bit more like something i might like look at and see if there's something for me but it's quite expensive and it's not available to me. So I don't know. If if I really look at these products, then I don't really see anything that would appeal to me. Like that compact with the different shades of red. If that were a blush, it wouldn't be a color for me. But it would be more interesting. But it's like a lip palette, I think. And I'm not really into lip palettes. I'm, not I'm just not going to go through the trouble and take a lip brush and apply that. It's not something I'm going to do. So yeah, these two brands aren't really something I'm interested in. But I thought I would mention them. Maybe you would be interested in them. So we had this Jaclyn Hill Valentine's Day launch. And they had like these, what's it called? Like surprise boxes? Mystery boxes. They had like these mystery boxes. And everybody was like, that's kind of weird because she doesn't have products we wouldn't even know if we would like the products and i have to say it's kind of weird to bring out mystery boxes if you don't really have a collection if you're not selling anything how can people know if they would like what's in the box so i think she ended up showing what was in it i think she felt like there wasn't really another choice and i think it was a weird choice to do their first launch in like over a year like this i also heard that this sold out like before the official release time and a lot of people were angry about that i'm personally like I don't even care anymore. What are you expecting? I'm not gonna pay any attention to her brand. Maybe sometime she would really like proof 
prove herself and redeem herself and show that she has really done something to better herself and not have all these crazy shady weird launches all the time i'm just not really interested in something if i don't know if i can trust her i don't trust her and that's why i'm also not interested in anything she does and if people are still buying her stuff i'm like it's it's at your own risk you know what she's like so when i see something like this and there's another like weird launch i'm like of course of course what would you expect are you really surprised i'm not so i'm not interested in her brand in general i don't really know what she's doing or why everything is always going wrong with her so yeah not interested even if this were still available and it didn't sell out before the release time it's not for me i'm not really into her or her brand then we have this new kkw collection we have two palettes one is mauvey one is more like honey warm toned when i saw this like the first few seconds i was like oh kind of interesting looks kind of nice but i think that's more because of the way they took the pictures with all the props and stuff but i feel like if you would take that away then nothing would be left and it would be just the same palette that she has already released like 10 times over there's nothing special about this it just seems a little bit more special because of the way they took the pictures but really she's just doing the same thing over and over and over and over again and because of that it kind of feels like a cash grab she isn't really like creative she isn't creating new stuff she's just expecting to buy stuff because it's hers so for a second there i was like slightly slightly little bit interested maybe but as soon as i really looked at it it was like nah not for me still not interested i would like to see something different from her someday but even then i don't think i would buy it then we have this new cafe collection by mark jacobs beauty i'm not interested in that concealer foundation thingy i don't really wear that kind of stuff i have two concealers one liquid one in a pot concealer and i don't have foundation it's not my thing um maybe someday it will be but right now i'm not wearing any of that so that's not what i'm interested in those two face palettes it kind of feels like we're going back in time they make me think kind of of those rimmel face palettes that they used to sell i don't know if they are still available but there used to be this rimmel face palette where you had these types of shades you had three shades a bronzer a blush and a highlight and it just looked like this but then in less fancy packaging so it's like something we've seen before and i feel like didn't really work that's now back on the market i just feel like i don't i never really like the combinations of colors that they pick like i would like the lightest bronzer but then i would like the highlighter and the blush from the darker palette so i would never really be satisfied with the combinations that they choose and then also how does your brush fit in this i think it would be kind of difficult to fit your bronzer brush in that i feel like that would be too much of a hassle for such an expensive product so i just feel like it isn't really practical for several reasons i guess the packaging does have something about it it's kind of inspired by coffee i think so at first glance it's kind of like oh it looks kind of cute but when i start thinking about it I would rather just buy a single blush, a single bronzer and a single highlight that's really like my perfect color. Or maybe even I would like combine colors in my own magnetic palette. I think I would prefer that to just combine some magnetic pants myself and really create a color story that I would want in a face palette. Then we have this Colourpop Make It Black collection. I think this is like a few brands were selling their products in a black packaging and then the profits would go to like black owned businesses. And it has to do with the pull up for change initiative. I feel like people have different opinions about this and I'm a little bit on the fence about it. What I do appreciate about it is that they actually are not profiting from this themselves at least not really they are not making money from this directly like if you would compare it with like pride month palettes and makeup products often the profit is just for the brands themselves and they don't really donate or they donate just a little bit so that's what i like about it but on the other hand i feel like it isn't enough you have to really show people that you care and you really have to change change your ways and not just bring out a collection like this but really think in your own 
business, how you can change, how you can be more inclusive. I think what rubs people the wrong way with this is that Colourpop is always releasing really light eyeshadow palettes and really light cheek products and I heard that they discontinued their darker bronzers. So I feel like the black community still doesn't feel like they are hurt. And I think that an initiative like this and bringing out products like this and donating profits, it has to go hand in hand with other changes within the business as well. And if you don't really do that, then it's like, then it just feels like it's a bit too little too late. So I'm a bit on the fence about it and I'm also not an expert. If you have any thoughts about this, please let me know. Right now, I just feel like it's good, but it's not enough. Then we have these new blushes by Vive. It's called the Sunset Blush. They are 23 pounds each and there are five colors. I don't really know how I feel about this. I don't really know how I feel about the packaging. I feel like it looks a little bit cheap but I don't really know what it is about it. Maybe it's like the slightly shiny inner packaging. It's like slightly shiny black and I don't feel like that looks the most luxurious. I do have to say I quite like the colors that they came out with. I especially like that darker rosy shade. I wouldn't mind trying that one but I don't feel like ordering anything from Vive right now but maybe in the future if there would be more things that I would be interested in then I might throw in this blush as well. So it's not something I'm gonna buy right now but I do like the look of that color. I think I would watch some reviews and see how other people feel about it. Okay, next up we have the Flight Club palette by Menagerie. I already talked about the sneak peek. I already talked a little bit about what I thought would be in here. So I already talked about the sneak peek and I was like slightly interested, but now they revealed the inside and it's gonna be available on the 26th of February. It's gonna be $38.95. I have to say, a lot of people were really like excited about this palette, but I'm a little bit disappointed. I just feel like a lot of the colors look a bit too similar. Like we have a lot of similar purples that are in a similar family, similar undertone, similar depth. Also, when I look at those shimmers, they look a little bit similar. And then we also have these pinks and these nude shades. What personally really throws me off is that beige and that slightly darker beige that they put in the palette. I feel like that takes away from the color story. I didn't need that in a purple palette. I would rather have had that they made the whole palette purple or put in some other colors. Like maybe blue or green or anything anything else than these nudie light pages maybe the shades are more interesting than they look in this prom promo picture maybe if they show some swatches you can see more of a difference between the shades but i feel like this color story doesn't really pull me in it doesn't really it doesn't really give me what i would want i feel like the violet ink palette was better curated like those colors really all worked together they all had a place in a palette and it was just a small very well curated purple palette but they've discontinued that for this one so yeah in general i'm just a little bit disappointed and i feel like they could have done more they could have done more with this color story and I don't think I would buy it. I think they could have edited it down or maybe add some more variation. They could have done something with it. I do like the idea. I do think the packaging is really cute. I think it's gonna sell well and a lot of people are gonna like it. But for me personally, it isn't it. But that's fine because I already told you that there are a lot of singles that I want to order from Menagerie. And then I can just focus on the singles that I already wanted. And don't have any stress about trying to get this palette. Then we have these new Melt Minis. So they have this mini eyeshadow stack, which I don't get. I thought they were moving away from the stacks, but now we're getting back into the stacks. And they are really bulky. Like the packaging for the eyeshadows, like one eyeshadow, if you take that apart, it looks so like thick and bulky. So I wouldn't be interested in that, especially because I'm not interested in the stack packaging i don't think i would enjoy that i would rather just have a small palette i don't really know why they're going back to that and then mini lipsticks i know a lot of people are into mini lipsticks they like mini lipsticks they 
think it's more convenient because there's less product. I personally don't really like mini lipsticks because I feel like they are so fragile. At least I have one mini lipstick and I don't really like how like thin the lipstick itself is. I feel like it's just gonna break if I put too much pressure on it. It's not as like sturdy as a normal sized lipstick. So I'm not really interested in this. It just doesn't look appealing. I don't like the packaging of the eyeshadows and I don't like the colors and mini lipsticks is just not something I'm looking for right now. Maybe if they would get like really good reviews. I don't know what the price of this is. If they were like really cheap and they had really good reviews, maybe I would throw it in an order sometime. But right now, looking at this, I'm not interested. Then we have this Violet Voss I Love You Cherry Much eyeshadow palette. They are releasing quite a lot. I feel like I'm talking about them like every episode. They're always coming out with new palettes. I just feel like this packaging looks really bad. It looks like they just did this with like paint or something. Like what is this design? Who made this? It looks really cheap. And then the inside, I feel like it's a little bit too redundant. I just feel like they could have edited this down. There didn't have to be that many shades in this palette. I do think the inside looks better than the outside, but in general, this is not a color story that I would be interested in, especially because it's like really warm nude and it's just too redundant. It's not, it's not for me. Then Jaclyn Hill is coming to Ulta Beauty. This is also something I don't really get. Why do they think she's a trustworthy business partner? I don't know if I would take this risk if I were Ulta and also she doesn't have any products. So it feels a little bit random. Like where is this coming from all of a sudden? When is she launching all this makeup? But let's see, maybe she will surprise us. Then we have this new Chanel Pearl de Lumiere. It's an illuminating blush powder with a touch of rosy champagne color and radiance to the complexion. This is gonna be $70. I feel like it's kind of like a light bronzer like a light shiny bronzer. I wouldn't really have a use for this. It's like in between things a little bit too much. Maybe maybe if it were a little bit more rosy, but I wouldn't personally spend $70 on a shiny blush bronzer hybrid product like this. So I'm not interested. And I just feel like it's a product that doesn't really have a use. Maybe for some people with a specific skin tone, but I feel like for most people, this isn't really gonna work. Then we have this new BFF collection by BH Cosmetics. There's a BFF eyeshadow palette and a BFF snatch face palette and a lip duo and another lip duo. The colors of the face palettes and the lip duos don't really attract me. Not really something for me. When I look at it, I'm like, yeah, fine. Sure, it's nice, but not interested. And then the eyeshadow palette, there are some nice colors in here, I have to say. Some nice blues and greens, some nice red and yeah, some nice neutral tones. But I feel like it's a little bit too big and they could have edited it down. Maybe if there were less neutral shades that I would be more interested. But looking at this, it's not really something I'm into right now. I would want it to be smaller or maybe more colorful. Then we have this new mascara by Nabla called the Vicious Mascara. I have to say this packaging looks really cool. I think they really did a great job on the packaging. But I'm pretty sure this only comes in black and I don't really like wearing black mascara. I just like wearing a dark brown mascara. So if brands would release more brown mascaras then I would more I would be more inclined to try new mascaras but right now I'm just sticking with what I know sticking with the mascara that works for me so I like it but I'm not gonna try it because it's not my color and I think that's probably gonna be the case with most new mascaras usually they are not brown and then I'm already not really interested then we have this new palette by Viseart or Visart it's a love letter attendu and this has some nice springy tones. It has some green, coral, some nudes, a bit of purple and like a light orange. I have to say it looks quite cute, but it isn't enough 
to really pull me in. I feel like it looks a bit similar to the Tiny Marvels palette by Sydney Grace. It just gives me those same vibes. It does give me like the spring vibes. It does look quite nice, but I feel like there just aren't enough shades in here that are really interesting or really special. So that's why I wouldn't pick it up. I do like the look of that green. Then we got a sneak peek of the Too Faced Teddy Bear collection. I have to say it looks kind of cute, but it isn't really something for me. The palette kind of makes me think of the Sigma Corderosa, like it has a bit of those warm, rosy shades. I do think a lot of people are gonna like this, especially like neutral lovers. I, yeah, I just guess it's kind of cute, it's not for me, nothing I'm gonna pick up, but I guess it's not like a bad release. Alright, then we have this Spring 2021 Ethereal Bloom palette by Artist Couture. I do think this color story looks quite cute and the swatches look quite good. I like these colors. I'm really into pastels right now. I'm really like feeling the spring vibes. So when I first saw this, I was like, hmm, interesting. But then when I started like looking around, seeing where I could get this, I don't feel like I could get this for like a fair price. If I would order it from their website, it would be like 60 euros, which is way too much for this little eight pan. And I thought there were some UK websites that also had this brand, but they also had a much higher price tag than what they have on their own website. So I don't think this would be worth it for me, although I really like the color story and I really like the vibe and the color of the packaging. It just looks really Really good to me and so, like something I would like but it's just not gonna be worth it and I'm I just gotta be honest with myself and not spend my money on this especially since I just got the glam light ice cream dream palette and I just feel like these shades are also in there and more much more and then this little palette would be the same price as that glam light palette and if I compare that I'm like no not worth it don't do it just let it go by the way I filmed this look with the ice cream dream palette and the video is gonna be up very soon this is just a type of palette that I'm gonna appreciate from afar I'm not gonna buy it but I can still think it's really like beautiful and has a nice color story. Let's see what else I want to talk about on trend mood. We also have this blockbuster eyeshadow palette by Hot Topic. I don't know this brand. I don't really know about this palette. It looks a bit cheap. It looks a bit like toy makeup, like children makeup. And it's all matte and I'm not really into that. I wouldn't really buy an all matte palette. I would rather buy something with really interesting shimmers. So I get the idea, but it... It just doesn't look appealing to me. Let's see if there's some indie makeup I still want to talk about. So there's this new palette coming out by Adept Cosmetics. It's called the Ninhydrin palette and it has a lot of special shimmery shades. At least that's how it looks and it will cost $68. So I've heard a lot of people rave about the Plain Jane palette and I do have to say it looks really interesting. This palette looks really interesting but I don't think I'm gonna buy such an expensive palette right now. Because $68 is already a lot, but then I would also have to pay quite high shipping and also taxes. So it would end up being like $100. And that's a lot of money for a brand I've never tried. So I'd rather just order some of their singles, get a feel for the brand. And then maybe I would decide if I would ever buy a palette from them. But it's really expensive. I don't really feel like I want to spend that money on this right now. Maybe sometime in the future I will try the brand. And I do get the price tag. I do get that you get a lot of special shades. So I'm not saying that it's unfair. I guess it's a fair price. But if you get all these extra costs because you have to get it to Europe. That really like changes your perspective on American indie brands and indie makeup. It's just a big extra step you have to think about before ordering this stuff and I just feel like there are other brands that I'm more interested in right now even though I do believe that it's really nice and I do believe these really positive reviews so it looks really nice it looks really interesting I do like the colors in here but it's not for me right now I think I'm gonna watch some reviews and see what people think probably is really nice quality then we have a palette that I also think looks really nice but it's kind of the same story it would be quite expensive if I would order it 
pay the high shipping and also have to pay these taxes that come with it. So this is a Glaminatrix Cosmetics U Beauty Palette that they revealed. There are some really nice sparkly shades in here, some nice duochromes and some nice multi-chromes as well. I do really like this color story and the textures that are in here. Something about this palette makes me quite interested and kind of pulls me in. They had this video where they showed it in like the sunlight and the shimmery shifty shades looked really good. But I don't know if I would want to spend the money. If I would want to spend money on the shipping and the taxes. But in the end this one would be quite a bit cheaper than the Adept Cosmetics palette. So I'm kind of thinking about it but first I also want to see some swatches and really see like the explanations of all the shades, what are the shifts. Is it something that I would really use? But I am quite interested in this one. I'm kind of eyeing this one, keeping an eye on it. That interest might fade away after a while. They just revealed this yesterday. Sometimes I'm really like excited about a launch like the first day and then after a day or two I'm like, wait a minute, why am I so excited? Is it because it's new? Yes, probably. And then I kind of forget about it again. We'll have to see if that happens with this one. But so far, what I've seen so far, I'm quite interested. Okay, last thing is this blush by Menagerie Cosmetics. This is the Figgy Glow Blush. It's kind of like a purple, kind of like magenta. It kind of has this cool tone glow. It looks kind of interesting, but I don't know if it would be like too much if it, would, if it would be like too purple but I think I would kind of see myself wearing this actually I'm slightly intrigued but I don't know but it's also like out of my comfort zone it kind of depends how purple it is if it's like more of a really cool toned pink with the slight with the slight purple shift then I might be interested I'm I'm also keeping an eye on that one, but I'm really not sure yet. So those were all the new makeup releases I wanted to talk about. That was everything for today's video. Let me know in the comments what you think about these releases. Like this video if you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in my next one. Bye bye!